Welcome back. Well, he won the Nobel Peace Prize for his pioneering work in credit programs for the poor. But Mohammed Yunus now says he's abandoning his plan to get involved with Bangladeshi politics. Yunus announced Thursday he will not be creating a new party to run in the next elections, expected sometime before 2008. He said he failed to rally enough support among the political elite. Well, confrontation has always been a part of uh, politics in Bangladesh since it was born out of Pakistan's civil war. The military ruled until 1990 and democracy arrived a year later. But as Nicole Johnson reports, it hasn't brought stability to the young country. Carved out of East Pakistan, the new country of Bangladesh welcomes home its first prime minister, Sheikh Mujibar Rahman. But three years later, he's assassinated. And so begins a tumultuous era of coups, counter coups and assassinations that come to be known as politics in Bangladesh. The 1980s are dominated by this man, General Hussein Mohammed Ashad. But allegations of corruption lead to his political demise. Students confront the police and General Ashad loses his grip on power ending up in jail. Since then, power has oscillated between two dynasties. At the helm, Khalid Azir from the Nationalist Party and Sheikh Hasina Wajed, the daughter of the country's first prime minister from the Awami League. Over the years, changing tides have seen protests on both sides. In 2004, while Sheikh Hasina spoke, a bomb blast. 22 people were killed, Hasina survived. Now the tide has turned against both women. An unelected interim government backed by the army is in power. It says it will address corruption and violence. Bangladesh is quieter, but remains one of the poorest countries in the world. Half the population of more than 150 million lives on less than a dollar a day. And life is getting more expensive since October, food prices have increased by as much as 70%, according to one report. Bangladesh has been described as a basket case. Some suggest if the country spirals out of control again, it could also add a failed state to that epitaph. Well, once again, let's welcome our guest to the show, Mahbub Al Alam. He's the editor of The Independent, an English language newspaper in Bangladesh. Kumar Murshid is the UK political advisor to the Awami League and exiled journalist Salim Samad. He joins us from Canada. Thank you all once again for being with us. Mr. Kumar, what's the probability that Bangladesh may return to outright military rule? I personally don't consider that to be a probable uh, scenario. I know that the threat is there, uh, and it's an ominous threat. Uh, I have to say that the report that we just heard uh, is, is, in my view, uh, extremely grim and negative. It uh, doesn't quite portray a, a, a fair picture of Bangladesh and its, uh, its, its successes in spite of the many tribulations it has had. Now, let me just say this. That uh, just to, in Bengali our defense, I'd like to say that we weren't preparing a comprehensive report on the whole history of Bangladesh. No, I, I, was, I appreciate it was that. But I, I, I understand that. I nevertheless found it rather too negative. But let me just say this, that the people of, of Bangladesh, we have fought and, and paid a very heavy price for our independence. Three million of us were killed. Um, and we did that, uh, you know, uh, in order to, to create a better future for, for the entire people of Bangladesh. And part of that future is to ensure that we have a robust democratic process, that people genuinely rule through their institutions. And uh, that is a reality that has to happen in Bangladesh. It is something that has in many ways eluded us, but we are, in, in my view, we are now in, at, a, at a time uh, where even though there may be some, some concerns about the way in which the military is, 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 is functioning, I, I believe that there is sufficient wisdom in the military not to make the mistake of trying to uh, assume power by some uh, inappropriate methods and to uh, alienate the people of the country. The All people right. of Bangladesh have, have, have seen through uh, military dictators before, and no one should be under the, under, under right. the illusion. I'm, I'm that sorry, the military I'm going to need to interrupt you there just so we can uh, go once again yes. to Salim Ahmed in Canada. Do you agree with that analysis that the military perhaps don't really intend to, to stay around for the long term in politics, of course? First of First of all, uh, we must understand the history. In 1990, 
when the, the autocratic government of General Ashad collapsed, the democratic government took over in 1991, and since then we had a democratic government. But let me tell you, the militaries always had an upper hand in state politics. They always interfered in all the caretaker government. You look into the 1991 caretaker government, you look into the 1996 caretaker government, and of course in this time, the, in 2001, and again okay. in 2007. All right, what to the go, militaries uh, always interfered in state politics. Let's uh, talk to Mr. Mahmoubal once again in uh, Dhaka. The creation of a National Security Council, an indication that the, uh, the military's role in politics is already strengthening. Would you agree with that? Well, I don't think National uh, Security Council has been formed. I haven't come across an announcement to this effect yet. There have been talks about this uh, council, but in many other countries there are National Security Council, which does not necessarily suggest involvement of, of the military in a, in a, in a very, uh, you see, in a big way. Right. I'm afraid uh, we are running out of time. We'll have to thank our guest, Mahbub Al Alam, editor of The Independent, Kumar uh, Murshid, political advisor to the Awami League, and Salim Samad, a Bangladeshi journalist in exile. Thank you all for joining us. And thank you so much for joining us here on this edition of Inside Story. As always, we welcome your comments and suggestions. Feel free to email them to us at insidestory at aljazeera.net. Goodbye for now.